Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to talk about how one goes about writing a formation equation. And when do we need a formation equation? When we are doing Hess's Law calculations, and specifically when we're doing Hess's Law and combining formation equations. So what exactly do I mean by a formation reaction or formation equation? Well, a formation equation is a chemical equation showing the compound being formed from its component elements in their most stable state. So I like to say this is where we get to play universe. We get to make the compounds from their elements. So when you're doing this, there are some things that you have to keep in mind. First of all, we can't forget are diatomic elements, and they have to be written as diatomic when we're writing our equations. So remember our seven diatomic elements, you can find them in two ways. You can find them on the periodic table looking for the magnificent seven, starting with nitrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, or and hydrogen, the weirdo, or you can remember our term for our diatomics, Brinkelhoff. Now, you also have to remember that the compound that you're forming using these formation reactions um, should have the coefficient of 1 because when you're reading the um, the values for delta H on a table, are they're always listed in kilojoules per mole. So you need to make sure that your coefficient is 1. And you may have to use fractions. So you know when we write equations and when we balance them, we always go through this lowest whole number ratio thing, and they have to have whole numbers. Well, when you're writing formation reactions, you may need to use a fraction in front of the element symbol in order to get this to work out. So fractions may happen. So let's look at a first example. If we were forming the compound AB2 from monatomic elements A and B, we would add 1A plus 2Bs to get AB2. So that would be balanced. Easy peasy. Second example, what if we were forming the compound C2D6E where D and E are diatomic? So now we have to be a little bit more um, thoughtful about this. So C2 means I need two carbons. D6 means that I need three of the element D because it's diatomic. And I only need one of element E, so it's going to have to be one half of E2, the diatomic, so that I get the correct amount of each element on each side of the equation. So let's look at another example. The formation of C6H12O6, which I'm pretty sure is glucose. So we would start with six carbons, and then hydrogen is diatomic, so we're only going to need six because it's H2, six times two is 12, plus, and we're going to need three oxygens because again, oxygen is diatomic, and that would give us our C6H12O6. So six carbon, six carbon, 12 hydrogen, 12 hydrogen, six oxygen. Good to go. Example four, the formation of ammonium chloride. Now, all three of these elements are diatomic, nitrogen, hydrogen, and chlorine. So we're going to need half of a nitrogen to get one, plus two hydrogens to get four, two times two is four, plus half of a chlorine, one half times two is one, to get our NH4Cl. Checking one nitrogen, um, four hydrogens, and one chlorine. Example five, formation of sulfur trioxide. Sulfur is monatomic, where oxygen is diatomic. So we can just write sulfur plus. Now here we need three halves oxygen because three halves times two is three, and that's what we need up here. Our subscript is a three to get sulfur trioxide. So again, you're going to have to use fractions when you write these to make sure that the formation actually forms what you're shooting for. 
And then finally, a sixth example, the formation of dinitrogen pent oxide. So they're both diatomic, so one nitrogen, N2 plus, and now we need five halves of oxygen because five halves times two is five, and that will give us our dinitrogen pentoxide. So this is Ms. Augustine. I hope you'll have a little fun when you're writing these equations. I always feel very universal when I do this, so you get to play universe. And again, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.